Good day everyone. We are the fifth group and we will be discussing chapter 5, the expenditure cycle part 1, purchases and cash disbursements procedure. Before we go to our discussion, let us go over the objectives of our topic. First, fundamental tasks performed during purchases and cash disbursement processes. Second, functional areas involved in purchases and cash disbursements and the flow of these transactions through the organization. Third, documents, journals, and accounts that provide audit trails, promote the maintenance of records, and support decision-making and financial reporting. Fourth, risks associated with purchase and cash disbursement activities and the controls that reduce these risks. And fifth, operational features and the control implications of technology used in purchases and cash disbursement system. Overview of purchases and cash disbursement activities. These are purchases processing and cash disbursement procedure, payroll and fixed asset system, which also support the expenditure cycle. The conceptual system discussion is intended to be technology neutral. The task described in this section may be performed manually or by computer. Purchases Processing Procedure Include the tasks involved in identifying inventory needs, placing the order, receiving the inventory, and last, recognizing the liability. In general, these procedures apply to both manufacturing and retailing firms. A major difference between the two businesses types lies in the way purchases are authorized. Manufacturing firms purchase raw materials for production and their purchasing decisions are authorized by the production planning and control function. The inventory control function provides the purchase authorization for this type of firm. Monitor inventory records. In addition, inventory management involves ordering, stocking, and using a business material or products. These are various types of inventory like raw materials, cycle inventory, and MRO goods. Prioritizing your inventory helps you understand what you need to order or manufacture more frequently so you can continuously fulfill your customers' needs. Purchase Requisition our first procedure. A purchase order, request, or purchase requisition is a request sent internally within a company to obtain purchase goods and service, including stock. The request is a document which tells the purchasing department or manager exactly what item and services are requested, the quantity, source, and associated costs. Prepare purchase order, our second procedure. The objective of a purchase order is to communicate within your own firm and communicate to the supplier the quantity, quality, and type of material or services being ordered, as well as the prices agree upon the method of packaging, achievement, credit terms, and any condition or specification which must be met. In addition, many firms print a series of standard terms and condition on the back of each purchase order. These are, of course, different for different firms. Valid vendor files. In addition, which helps in identifying the only accepted vendors required by the organization for the purchases. The valid vendor files provide the control to organization which emphasize on maintaining the file. Receiving goods, our third procedure. During this time, the copies of the purchase order reside in temporary files in various department. No economic event has yet occurred. At this point, the firm has received no inventories and incurred no financial obligation. Hence, there is no basis for making a formal entry into any accounting record. However, firms often make memo entries of pending inventory receives an associated obligation. The next event 
in the expenditure cycle is the receipt of the inventory. Goods arriving from the vendor are reconciled with the blind copy of the purchases order. The blind copy. The purpose of blind copy is to force the receiving clerk to count and inspect inventories prior to a completing the receiving report. At times, receiving docks are very busy and receiving staff are under pressure to unload the delivery trucks and sign the bills of lading so that trucks drivers can go on their way. If receiving clerk are only provided quantity and permission, they may be tempted to accept deliveries on the basis of this information alone rather than verify the quantity and condition of the goods shipments that are short or contain damage or incorrect items must be detected before the firm accept and the places the goods in inventory the blind copy is an important device in reducing this exposure updating inventory records this detailed listing of a company's volume, complexity, and scope is known as a record inventory. A major management tools utilized by companies and businesses owners to ensure efficient operation. The records inventory includes details of the recorded information, dates prepared, people, and offices, maintaining the records, and medium used to record the data. A records inventory aids in administrative function such as planning, staying within budget, and identifying a company's information holdings. Set up accounts payable. An accounts payable system pays the bill of a business is an organized manner. The goals of this system are to make payments in a timely manner and to pay the correct amounts to the correct supplier. The following step can be used to set up such a step. First, select software. Second, set up supplier. Third, enter invoices. Fourth, approve invoices. Fifth, schedule payment. Sixth, test a check run. And seven, sign checks. And in perpetual inventory method, debit is inventory control and credit is payable control. In periodic inventory method, debit is purchases and credit is accounts payable. Posting to the general ledger involves recording detailed accounting transaction in the general ledger. It involves aggregating financial transactions from where they are stored in specialized ledger and transferring the information into the general ledger. Voucher payable system is a method for authorizing the disbursement of cash. A voucher is filled out that identifies what is to be paid for, the amount to be paid, and the account number to be charged. Once this voucher is approved, the disbursement system is authorized to issue payment Thus, a voucher system is a control issue to ensure that cash is only spent on authorized purchases. The Cash Disbursement System A cash disbursement is the outflow of cash paid in exchange for the provisions of goods and services. It processes the payment of obligations created in the purchase system. A business needs a cash disbursement system to handle a company's cash payments efficiently and securely. The objectives of the cash disbursement system is to ensure that only valid creditors receive payment and to ensure that the amounts paid are timely and correct. The payments must be timely and accurate because if the system makes payments early, the firm foregoes interest income that it could have earned on the funds. If it is paid late, the firm will lose purchase discounts and may damage credit standing. This is the data flow diagram for the cash disbursement system. The diagram is to show and represent the data flow or process of the system. Identify liabilities due. As shown on the previous slide, the cash disbursement process begins in the EP department by identifying items that have come due. 
Each day, the AP function reviews the open AP file and sends payment approval in the form of a voucher packet. Prepare cash disbursement. The cash disbursement clerk receives a voucher packet and reviews the documents for completeness and clerical accuracy. The clerk prepares a check and records the pertinent data in the check register, which is also called the cash disbursements journal. Depending on the organization's materiality threshold, the check may require additional approval by the cash disbursements department manager or treasurer. The negotiable portion of the check is mailed to the supplier and a copy of it is attached to the voucher packet as proof of payment. The clerk marks the documents in the voucher packets paid and returns them to the AP clerk. The cash disbursement clerk registers and sends a journal voucher with the following journal entry to the general ledger department. Debit accounts payable and credit cash. This is done before it will be posted on the general ledger. Update AP record. The AP clerk removes the liability by debiting the AP subsidiary account or by recording the check number and payment date in the voucher register. The voucher packet is filed on the closed voucher file and an account summary is prepared and sent to the general ledger function. Post to the general ledger. The general ledger function receives the journal voucher from cash disbursements and the account summary from AP. The voucher shows the total reductions in the firm's obligations and cash account as a result of payments to suppliers. These numbers are reconciled with the AP summary, and the AP control and cash accounts in the general ledger are updated accordingly. The approved journal voucher is then filed. This concludes the cash disbursements procedure. Good day, I'm Angelica Villanueva and I'll be discussing to you the expenditure cycle controls. But first, what is an expenditure cycle? An expenditure cycle is a set of purchasing decisions and actions. It is also the repetitive process of creating purchase orders, ordering goods and services, receiving, approving invoices, and the payment of said invoices. Now. What is the purpose of expenditure cycle controls? The purpose of these controls is to maintain order so that the process goes smoothly. Here are the following expenditure cycle controls. 1. Transaction authorization. 2. Segregation of duties. 3. Supervision. 4. Accounting records. 5. Access controls. and 6. Independent verification. I will discuss each control further on the preceding slides. The first control that I'm going to discuss with you is the transaction authorization. Under transaction authorization, there are two subsystems, purchases and cash disbursements. First off, purchases subsystem. Purchases subsystem continually monitors inventory levels. In here, it is also required to formalize the authorization process to promote efficient inventory management and to ensure the legitimacy of the purchases transactions. Without the steps said on the second bullet, unauthorized purchasing can result in excessive inventory levels for some items, which will incur damage to the organization's cash reserves, while others go out of stock, which will result to the loss of sales and manufacturing delays. Next, in cash disbursement system, the transaction authorization is done via the cash disbursement voucher. A cash disbursement journal is needed to provide an audit trail for verifying the authenticity of each check written. Also, by authorizing this, it will provide effective control over the cash flow of the firm. Next expenditure cycle control is the segregation of duties. The segregation of inventory control from the warehouse. By segregating these two, the firm will have a more concise and accurate record of the assets being released and kept. Segregation of the general ledger and accounts payable from cash disbursements. By separating these functions, exposure to fraud against the firm would be avoided. Next control is supervision. Inspection of assets. 
Receiving clerks must inspect items for proper quantities and condition. By inspecting these goods, it will protect the firm from incomplete orders and damaged goods. Theft of assets. Sometimes, receiving departments are all loaded with work which can lead to lost assets. It is essential to keep an eye on their goods even if the receiving department is cluttered to avoid theft. Next expenditure cycle control is accounting records. Under accounting records, direct and indirect access are discussed. Indirect access, locks, alarms, and restricted access are controlled and monitored for it will have an effect on the firm's inventories and cash. Meanwhile, in indirect access, the firm limits the access to documents that control its physical assets like equipment and machineries. Next is independent verification by accounts payable. In the accounts payable department, copies of key source documents like bank statements and supplier's invoice flow into this department for review and comparison. Each document contains facts about the purchase transaction which the accounts payable clerk must reconcile. These include the purchase order, the receiving report, and the supplier's invoice. First off is the purchase order. The purchase order shows that the purchasing agent ordered only the needed inventories from a valid vendor. This document should reconcile with the purchase requisition. 2. The receiving report. This is the evidence of the physical receipt of the goods, their condition, and the quantities received. The reconciliation of this document with the purchase order signifies that the organization has a legitimate obligation. 3. The supplier's invoice, which provides the financial information needed to record the obligation as an accounts payable. The accounts payable clerk verifies that the prices on the invoice are reasonable compared with the expected prices on the purchase order. By the general ledger, this verifies that the total obligations recorded equal the total inventories received and that the total reductions in accounts payable equal to the total disbursements of cash. Physical system. Physical system has two main components, the manual system and the cash disbursement system. And in this topic, I'm going to focus on manual system. Manual system. Manual system is a model depicting people, organizational unit, and physical documents and files. It envisions the segregation of duties and independent verifications, which are essential to effective internal control regardless of the technology in place. In addition, there are inefficiencies intrinsic to manual system, which gave rise to modern system using improved technologies. How does manual system affects the business system? First, manual systems serve as a visual training aid to promote a better understanding of key concepts. Manual or document flowcharts depict information as the flow of physical documents, their source, routing, destination, and sequence of events are visually discernible from the flowchart. For short, in manual system, there are several departments. Each department operates to meet an efficient information that is essential to operations and effective internal control. How important is manual system in the era of business digitalization? First, manual system serves as a virtual practice to advocate better comprehension towards key concept that covers essential documents. This document is called a flowchart which represents the mobility of company source, routing, variables, destination, and sequence of business activity that is visually sensible for the management. These departments are the inventory control, purchasing department, receiving department, accounts payable department, and general ledger department. Now let's talk about inventory control. Inventory control. What is inventory control? Inventory control describes business activities of the materials management function. The inventory control function maintains the formal accounting inventory records. 
inventory control monitors and records finished goods and inventory levels. When the inventories drop to a predetermined reorder point, a purchase requisition is prepared and sent to prepare purchase order function to initiate the purchase process. What is the practical function of inventory control to the manual system? When inventories drop to a predetermined reorder point, the clerk prepares a purchase requisition. One copy of the requisition is sent to the purchasing department and one copy is placed in the open purchase requisition file. Note that to provide proper authorization control, the inventory control department is segregated from the purchasing department, which executes the transaction. Why do the business firms need inventory control? This is to make the purchasing process efficient. The inventory control function will supply much of the routine ordering from information that the purchasing department needs directly from the inventory and valid vendor files. Purchasing Department Purchasing Department is concerned with the Purchase Requisition Document. Purchase Requisition Document is used when the Production Department needs to make a purchase or an order request on behalf of their company. The Purchasing Department may need to prepare detailed product, specifications, and request bids from competing vendors. Everyone must not be confused with the purchase order and purchase requisition because purchase order only occur when purchase requisition is established. Thus, purchase order is issued after the purchase requisition is confirmed by the purchasing department itself. What is the practical function of purchase department to the manual system and how important is it to the company. The purchasing department receives the purchase requisition, sorts them by vendor, and prepares a multi-part purchasing order for each vendor. Two copies of the purchasing order are sent to the vendor. One copy of the purchasing order is sent to inventory control, where the clerk files it with the open purchase requisition. One copy of the purchase order is sent to Accounts Payable for filing in the Accounts Payable pending file. One copy, which is the blind copy, is sent to the receiving department where it is filed until the inventories arrive. The clerk files the last copy along with the purchase requisition in the open purchase order file. So the importance of the purchase department is to prevent fraud transactions to the external suppliers. It is to oversee the purchase requisition workflow, meaning if there is no purchase requisition submitted to the purchase department, there will be no purchase orders to be issued. Accounts Payable Department Accounts Payable Department is concerned with issuing the supplier's invoice document. The supplier's invoice document is the formal document which provides information which will then be used in preparation of supporting documents in the accounts payable department. When the accounts payable clerk receives the supplier's invoice, he or she reconciles it with the supporting documents that were previously placed in the accounts payable pending file. The clerk then prepares a voucher, files it in the open voucher file, and sends a copy of the voucher to the data processing. To prevent business conflict, clerk matches it to the supporting purchase order and receiving report received from the purchasing and receiving departments, respectively. After the process, the clerk then proceeds to manually reconcile all present documents to ensure the credibility of the file and prepares an accounts payable record from the department. The accounts payable process or function is immensely important 
since it involves nearly all of company's payments outside of payroll. Reminder, accounts payable is the firm's liability. Credit. And the last is the general ledger department out of the five departments. General ledger is basically the record of the company's entire financial transaction history and also the application of double entry bookkeeping. It contains the firm's account information in the form of highly summarized control accounts. The general ledger plays a big role in the manual system and it is to be discussed on the next slide. The general ledger department receives a journal voucher from the accounts payable department and an account summary from inventory control. The general ledger clerk reconciles this and posts to the inventory and accounts payable control accounts. With this step, the purchases phase of the expenditure cycle is completed. And in this final slide, we are going to discuss about the annual purchase system flowchart. As you can observe, there are five departments and one external party, which is the vendor or the external supplier. The department's accounts receivable, inventory control, and general ledger departments are playing associating business activity within the company. This happens when upon receipt of sales documents from the billing department, the accounts receivable and inventory control clerks update their respective subsidiary ledgers. Periodically, they prepare journal vouchers and account summaries, which they send to the general ledger department for its sole purpose to implement reconciliation and posting to the control accounts. The following describes the expenditure cycle manual procedures for a company. The inventory control clerk examines the inventory records for items that must be replenished and prepares a two-part purchase requisition, meaning there are several copies of purchase requisition to be issued towards the other department, not only for the inventory control department. This is for reconciliation purposes of the records. At first, a first copy of the requisition is sent to the purchasing department, and the second is filed internally. Upon receipt of the requisition, the purchasing clerk selects a supplier from the valid vendor based on the historical re reference source and prepares a three-part or multi-part purchase order. The first copy of purchase order is sent to the supplier or the vendor. The second copy is sent to the accounts payable department where it is filed temporarily and the third copy is filed in the, purcha in the purchases department. A few days after the supplier ship, ships the order, the goods arrived at the receiving department. As mentioned above, their function is to inspect the items with its condition and if it fulfilled the compulsory, uh, compulsory standard. And the receiving clerk prepares a three-part receiving report describing the number and quality of the items received when the materials are proven non-defective. The first copy of the receiving report accompanies the goods to the stores where they are secured. The second is sent to inventory control where the clerk posts it to inventory records and files the document. The last copy is sent to the accounts payable department where it is filed with the purchase order. A day two or later, the accounts payable clerk receiving the, so the supplier's invoice or the bill for the item shipped. The clerk pulls the purchase order and the receiving report from the temporary file and compares the quantity ordered, quantity received, and the price charge. After reconciling the three documents, the clerk enters a purchase and the purchases journal and posts the amount owed to the accounts payable subsidiary account. On the payment due date, the accounts payable clerk posts to the accounts payable subsidiary account to remove the liability and prepares a voucher authorizing payment to the vendor. The voucher is then sent to the cash disbursement clerk. Upon receipt of the voucher, the cash disbursement clerk prepares a check 
and sends it to the supplier. The clerk records the check in the check register and files a copy of the check in the department filing cabinet. The second one in physical system is called the cash disbursement system. Every small business needs this system that efficiently and securely handles a company's cash payments. In this case, accounts payable is closely tied to cash disbursements and most transactions are processed through AP when a cash payment is made. In this system, proper documentation is very important. It is also part an effective cash disbursement function, and all cash disbursements must be recorded on the company's financial records. The presence of good internal control is important in cash disbursements and helps ensure that cash is paid for legitimate transaction. The cash disbursement system has three major departments, and these are Accounts Payable or AP Department, Cash Disbursement Department, and lastly, the General Leisure Department. We will tackle each department in the next slide. Accounts Payable Department is the first department in cash disbursement system. The AP function is in charge of approving payments on a company's vendor and creditor transactions. AP approves transactions for payment only when supporting documentation exists on the transactions. The reason is that AP matches the necessary paperwork for transaction approval. It is preferable that it doesn't record the actual payment to the vendor or creditor to prevent the payment or fraudulent or invalid transaction. Second is the cash disbursement department. The cash disbursement clerks receive the voucher packets and review the documents for completeness and clerical accuracy. It means each disbursement, the clerk prepares a three-part check and records the check number, dollar amount, voucher number, and other pertinent data in check register. The process is the check, along with the supporting documents, goes to the cash disbursement department manager or treasurer for his or her signature. The negotiable portion of the check is mailed to the supplier. The clerk returns the voucher packet and check copy to the AP department and files one copy of the check. Finally, the clerk summarizes the entries made to check register and sends a journal voucher to the general ledger department. Upon receipt of the voucher packet, the AP clerk removes the liability by recording the check number in the voucher register and filing the voucher packet in the closed voucher file. Finally, the clerk sends an AP summary to the general ledger department. Thus, it is the department that groups accounts in general ledger, payroll, and fixed assets even if the accounts belong to different sets of funds. After grouping accounts in departments, you can use the departments for reports and inquiries. As we can see, it is an example diagram of cash disbursement system. The simple of brief explanation to this is that the voucher payable came from the supplier and after that, we will review the documents in liable due, third in prepare check at cash disbursement, and lastly, gave it to the supplier again. But if we will discuss it thoroughly, the voucher payable came from the supplier after that, they will open the AP file, review the documents and liable due, and before they give the check to the supplier, we have so-called check copy or journal copy. The check copy update the AP record, AP subsidiary ledger, and closer voucher, and goes to AP summary. While the journal file is direct to reconcile the AP and posting to the ledger. And lastly, they will prepare the check or cash disbursement and give it to the supplier. Computer-based purchases and cash disbursements applications are also called CBUS, is a software system typically found within a manufacturing business to reduce error, time spent on making purchases, and to increase profitability. 
There are software interventions which automate this time-consuming aspect of the process, allowing for a central repository of data which streamlines the process, makes it easy to reorder, eliminates the human error factor, and can even link to accurate real-time supply chain information. CBAS can be regarded as a continuum with two extremes which are the automation at the low end and re-engineering at the high end. Automation entails using technology to improve efficiency and effectiveness, while re-engineering uses technology to replace existing business procedures with brand new innovative procedures. In this topic, we can perceive how both automation and re-engineering applies in CBAS. The following methods are used for authorizing and ordering inventories. The system prepares POs and sends them to purchases for review, signing, and distributing. The system distributes POs directly to the vendors and internal users by passing purchases. The system uses electronic data interchange or EDI and electronically places the order without POs. Other tasks performed automatically by the computer are the following. Updates the inventory subsidiary file from the receiving report, calculates batch totals for general ledger update, closes the corresponding records in the open file to the closed PO file, validates the voucher records against valid vendor files, the system scans for vouchers currently due, prints checks for these vouchers, records these checks in the check register, and batch totals are prepared for the general ledger update procedure. Using batch processing technology, there are four steps to take on automating purchases. First step is the data processing department, purchasing department. Purchaser creates purchase requisition. The purchase order process starts with the purchase requisition, a document that is created by the purchaser and submitted to the department that controls finances. Consider this the part of the process where you get the thumbs up to the purchase of the goods and services you want. You're not actually ordering anything. You're getting the approval to do so. Approvers can choose to approve, reject, or flag your request for further discussion. The key difference between purchase requisitions and purchase orders is that a purchase requisition is about permission and the purchase orders are about purchasing. Next step is the data processing department receiving department. Purchaser issues purchase order. Once the purchasing or procurement department has approved the purchase requisition, it issues a purchase order to the vendor or suppliers. In essence, POs place the order. Purchase orders are typically created using electronic purchasing systems like Purchase Control, which enables businesses to track POs and submit them electronically. Step 3. Supplier or vendor approves, rejects, or submits PO for discussion. The supplier or vendor will review the purchase order thoroughly, paying close attention to quantities, prices, total amount due, and terms and conditions. Once the vendor or supplier approves the purchase order, usually Usually via email or using an e-procurement software, they prepare the goods or services to be delivered. If they do not have an item that is being purchased, or if there are other concerns with the order, it is flagged and sent back to the purchaser for further discussion. Last step is the purchaser records purchase order. The final step in the purchase order process consists of the purchaser recording the PO. As mentioned earlier, filing purchase orders is a good habit in case of an audit. Once these steps in the purchase order process are complete, the goods or services are delivered and expected. Thereafter, the vendor issues an invoice to the purchaser, payment is made, and the transaction is complete. Before proceeding, we need to discuss first the alternative approaches for authorizing and ordering inventories. There are three alternative approaches for authorizing and ordering inventories. In alternative one, the system automatically prepares the PO documents and sends them to the purchasing department for review and signing. The purchasing agent then mails the approved POs to the vendors and distributes copies to the other internal users. Alternative two expedites the ordering process by distributing the POs directly to the vendors and internal users. Thus, by passing the purchasing department completely. Instead, the system produces an transaction list of items ordered for the purchasing agent's review. 
Alternative 3 represents a re-engineering technology called electronic data interchange. The concept was introduced in Chapter 4 to illustrate its application to the revenue cycle. This method produces no physical POs. Instead, the computer systems of both the buying and selling companies are connected via dedicated telecommunications link. The buyer and seller are parties to a trading partner arrangement in which the entire ordering process is automated and impeded by human intervention. In each of the three alternatives, the tasks of authorizing and ordering are integrated within the computer system. Because physical purchase requisitions have no purpose in such a system, they are not produced. Digital requisition records, however, would still exist to, to provide an audit trail. The purchasing process begins in a data processing department where the inventory control function is performed. When inventories are reduced by sales to customers or usage in production, the system determines if the affected items in the inventory subsidiary file have fallen to the reorder points. If so, a record is created in the open purchase requisition file. Each record in the requisition file defines a separate inventory item to be replenished. The record contains the inventory item number, a description of the item, the quantity to be ordered, the standard unit price, and the vendor number of the primary supplier. Upon receipt of the purchase requisition, the purchasing department prepares a multi-part PO. Copies are sent to the vendor, AP, receiving, data processing, and the purchasing department file. A copy of the PO is sent to data processing and used to create a record in the open PO file. The associated requisitions are then transferred from the open purchase requisition file to the closed purchase requisition file. When the goods arrive from the vendors, the receiving clerk prepares a receiving report and sends copies to the stores, purchasing, AP, and data processing. The data processing department creates the receiving report file from the data provided by the receiving report documents. Then a batch program updates the inventory subsidiary file from the receiving report file. The program removes the unordered flag from the updated inventory records and calculates batch totals of the inventory receipts, which will later be used in the general ledger update procedure. Finally, the associated records in the open PO file are transferred to the closed PO file. When the AP clerk receives the supplier's invoice, he or she reconciles it with the supporting documents that, that were previously placed in the AP pending file. The clerk then prepares a voucher, files it in the open voucher file, and sends a copy of the voucher to data processing. The voucher file is created from the voucher documents. A batch program validates the voucher records against the valid vendor file and adds them to the voucher register or open AP subsidiary file. Finally, batch totals are repaired for subsequent, subsequent posting to the AP control account in the general ledger. Computer-based echoes, cash disbursements procedures. Data processing department. The system scans the due date field of the voucher register for items due. Checks are printed for these items, and each check is recorded in the check register. The check number is recorded in the voucher register to close the voucher and transfer the items to the closed AP file. The checks, along with the transaction listing, are sent to the cash disbursements department. Batch totals of closed AP and cash disbursements are prepared for the general ledger update procedure. At the end of the day, batch totals of open and closed AP Inventory increases and cash disbursements are posted to the AP control, inventory control, and cash accounts in the general ledger. Cash Disbursements Department The cash disbursements clerk reconciles the checks with the transaction listing and submits the negotiable portion of the checks to management for signing. The checks are then mailed to the suppliers. One copy of each check is sent to AP and the other copy is filed in cash disbursements along with the transaction listing. Accounts Payable Department Upon receipt of the check copies, the AP clerk matches them with open vouchers and transfers these now closed items to the closed voucher file. Re-engineering the purchases or cash disbursement system Before we go to the preceding slides, why do you think re-engineering a system is essential? The reason is this for the firm to be more efficient and effective. By re-engineering the system, 
the firm will be able to see what needed to be changed in their current setting so that they will benefit more and have the transactions run faster and without delay. Now, let us discuss the key features of a re-engineered system. The first key feature that we're going to discuss is data processing. The following tasks are performed automatically. 1. The inventory file is searched for items that have fallen to the reorder points. 2. A record is entered in the purchase requisition file for each item to be replenished. 3. Requisitions are consolidated according to vendor number. 4. Vendor mailing information is retrieved from the valid vendor file. 5. Purchase orders are prepared and added to the open purchase order file. 6. A transaction listing of purchase orders is sent to the purchasing department for review. Next is the receiving department. The receiving clerk accesses the open purchase order file in real time by entering the PO number taken from the packaging slip. Next key feature is the data processing performed automatically by the system. 1. Quantities of items received are matched against the open purchase order record and a Y value is placed in a logical field to indicate the receipt of inventories. 2. A record is added to the receiving report file. 3. The inventory subsidiary records are updated. 4. The general ledger inventory control account is updated. 5. The record is removed from the open PO file and added to the open AP file or the accounts payable file and a due date is established. Once the due date is established, here are the following procedures that must be done. 1. Checks are automatically printed, signed, and distributed to the mailroom for mailing to vendors. 2. The payments are recorded in the check register file. 3. Items paid are transferred from the open AP file to the closed AP file. 4. The general ledger accounts payable and cash accounts are updated. Lastly, Reports detailing these transactions are transmitted via terminal to the accounts payable and cash disbursements departments for management review and filing. In the last topic we have, we will discuss control implications, specifically issues in expenditure cycle between automated and re-engineered system. Number 1. The Automated System In its definition, it is a combination of both software and hardware, which is designed and programmed to work automatically without need of any human operator to provide inputs and instruction for each operation. Now, we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this system. So, automated system has an ability to manage inventory needs. It allows you to monitor your processes in real time and identify problems as they arrive, enabling quick adjustment along the way. Second, better cash management. With one source of accurate, ERP software reduces administrative and operations cost. It allows manufacturers to proactively manage operations, prevent disruptions and delays, break up information log jumps, and helps user to make decisions more quickly. In short, it is cost savings. One of the disadvantages of this system is so-called time lock. A lock exists between the arrival of goods in the receiving department and recording inventory receipts in the inventory file. Depending on the type of sales order system in place, this lock may negatively affect the sales process. When sales clerks do not know the current status of inventory, sales may be lost. Purchasing Bottleneck Bottleneck is a point of congestion in a production system, such as an assembly line or computer network, that occurs when workloads arrive too quickly for the production process to handle. The inefficiency brought about the bottleneck often creates delays and higher production costs. Purchasing Bottleneck The purchasing department is directly involved in with all the purchase decisions, but the freeing purchasing agent from the routine work attention can be focused on problem orders and the purchasing staff can be reduced. Lastly, excessive paper documents. 
The automated system is laden with paper documents. Paper documents add costs because they must be purchased, stored, prepared, handled by internal mail carriers, and converted by the data processing personnel. Organizations with high volumes of transaction benefit considerably from reducing or eliminating paper documents in their system. The re-engineered system somehow the opposite of the automated system because it uses real-time procedures and direct access to files to shorten the lag time in recording keeping, eliminates routine manual procedures, and lastly achieves a significant reduction in paper documents unlike automated systems that have excessive paperworks. Segregation of duties. This system removes the physical separation between authorization and transaction processing. Here, the system provides management with detailed transaction, listing, and summary reports. These documents describe the automated actions taken by the system and allow management to spot errors and any unusual events that warrant investigation. Accounting records and access controls. Advanced systems maintain accounting records on digital storage media exclusively and magnetic disk. The organization must control the limit access to the disk to preserve the dignity of the records.